Hi students, uh, welcome to the fourth video lecture on uh, discrete Fourier series. In this video lecture, we would study about Fourier transform of periodic signals. As such, we will not be dealing with the DFS in this video lecture, but you would see that the next module of the lecture that we would be posting, we would be using this result uh, to relate between the discrete Fourier series and discrete time Fourier transform. Okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead. Let me share the as usual the desktop. Move on to a notebook mode. Okay. So here two things. Uh, one of some of your students were asking about uh, continuous time Fourier transform uh, also for a periodic signal. So what I would do here is I would uh, this is a small video relatively hopefully. Okay. And uh, this is. We, we would discuss both continuous time, uh, what, what's the CTFT of a periodic signal we will discuss and then followed by that we would discuss discrete time, okay. That's the objective of this uh, video. Before that, uh, let's say, let's take a look at the period, the properties of a periodic signal, okay. Suppose you have a periodic signal, what can we say about that? When does, for example, be it a continuous time signal or a discrete time signal when do we say that uh, it's a uh, Fourier transform uh, exists suppose if you take a periodic signal let's put the question first is the periodic signal always absolutely summable hmm? mm, is it absolutely summable not necessary right you could have signals that are not absolutely summable and so uh, so the convergence L1 type of convergence doesn't happen there okay there is no sufficient condition that uh, CTFT or TTFT exists okay uh, so then uh, if you look at whether these are square summable okay so here I assume that you already had covered these absolute summable and square summable and you remember them from the initial discussions of CTFT and TTFT so this is a uh, uh, from the L2 uh, norm okay in that sense if the signal is converging uh, well it is no the answers for these two questions are uh, maybe for some periodic signals but not for all okay so you could already sense here what kind of uh, Fourier transform you could exist be it uh, uh, the continuous time Fourier transform or discrete time Fourier transform what is it that you could ex expect here uh, since it is not satisfying any of these two conditions, you could expect perhaps some discontinuities in your Fourier transform. In other words, uh, anyway these CTFT and DTFT are continuous, you could expect their uh, continuous impulse functions in your Fourier transform. That's the first thing, right? And then uh, let's start with uh, a continuous time signal, uh, periodic signal in the continuous time domain, okay? Continuous time domain. Now uh, in that you uh, in the continuous time domain you you take a periodic signal as we were doing earlier let's uh, denote it with x tilde of t right so we have for example for the x tilde of t what can we say about its frequency domain representation uh, more specifically from what we studied from continuous time Fourier series this has, suppose if this is periodic with a periodicity of capital T, okay, then you have uh, in the frequency domain, the it will have frequency components of fundamental frequency and its harmonics. Those are the only frequency components that you could encounter there, right? And we, you, you already have worked out, assume that the DFS of it, okay, uh, this we have already worked out so if you so ctfs continuous time fourier series if you recollect how did we represent x tilde of t there uh, it will be equal to in case of continuous time you could have discrete harmonics but till infinity you could have it the weighting factor ak exponential of j times 2 pi by t times kt right of course I could have written this as omega also so if you want maybe in some places you might use it 
so let me write both the expressions here a subscript k e power j times for the continuous time domain we are using capital omega this being fundamental frequency let me call it as omega naught and multiples of it is k and anyway the variable vari your variable t is there correct and then what's the value of a k here this has been already done for you this is over one period of your periodic signal you will compute it integration over of course any it can be 0 to t as well but symmetric case let's consider here x tilde of t e power minus j i could again write in any of these two versions okay so let me write use the second one omega naught times kt that's how you would uh, compute a subscript k right now you would like to so what you could see here is x tilde of t you could write in terms of complex exponent weighted complex exponentials this being linear you could simply find out for these complex exponentials the continuous time fourier transform and sum them up that should give you the ctft of x tilde of t how do i do that suppose if i have one the ctft for it is 2 pi times delta of omega we are already done that refer back if you don't remember that okay now suppose if i have here this multiplied with e power j times omega naught kt okay multiplication on the time domain with a complex exponential what would it do it will shift bring a shift in the frequency domain and this is k times omega naught is there so that shift will be equal to k times omega naught and let there be a k is a constant for a given k if i have for example a constant multiplication here all i would get here is thus that's all now you already have you you substitute there so that implies your frequency uh, you take for example taking x tilde of t computing its ctft that's equivalent to computing the ctft of k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity a k e power j times omega naught k t to that you find out the ctft right so that's equal that implies your x of x again you use here tilde right that being uh, for x tilde of small x tilde of t will be equivalent to this is a summation is there k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity a k and 2 pi so 2 pi times a subscript k into delta of omega minus k times omega naught where omega naught is equivalent to 2 pi by t and your a k is given by this expression so that's your this is the ctft of a periodic signal as we rightly thought in the beginning it will have impulses it will have only the fundamental frequency and its harmonics the same thing you could observe here and this a k is given by a k here that's the expression okay we are done with continuous time periodic signals now let me move on to um, so if you want me to write everything in one place now let, 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 let me just write here where a subscript k is equal to 1 by t integral over one time period x tilde of t e power minus j times omega naught k t integrated over dt that's all now let me move on to the uh, the other part okay discrete time periodic signals that's what i would do now so let's move on to that 
discrete time periodic discrete time um, periodic sequences and for that we would like to compute the DTFT of discrete time periodic sequences. The same uh, uh, logic holds good here, the same reasoning we could do here. The moment uh, this is a periodic signal, uh, this is not absolutely summable, this is not abs uh, square summable, so you would expect deltas there, uh, impulse functions there, DTFT is x of e power j omega is continuous, so continuous delta functions is what you could expect. This being periodic in the frequency domain, you would have only the fundamental frequencies and its uh, harmonics. So that's what you could expect there. Uh, so let's start with writing the DFS expression, x tilde of n, at that being periodic, I could call it as x tilde of n, k varying from 0 to infinity, x tilde of k into e power j 2 pi by n times k n, right, uh, that's the expression, uh, now, this where, where x tilde of k is equivalent to n varying from 0 to n minus 1, sorry, this was k varying from 0 to n minus 1, n varying from 0 to n minus 1, x tilde of n, e power minus j, 2 pi pi n, k n, right. Uh, now what we would do again, you treat x tilde, you start with this expression of x tilde of n and to this you try to compute what is the DTFT of it. That's what we are going to do now. The same logic, if had it been 1, the DTFT of 1 is 2 pi times delta of, it's a continuous function, I'm writing small omega and then if I have now e bar j times 2 pi by n times k n then the DTFT of it is now shift omega gets shifted and that shift will be equal to minus of 2 pi by n times k correct and of course if you have x tilde of k multiplied here both sides it gets multiplied so that from there let me now write x tilde of e power j omega is equal to, you apply um, to this function, okay, to the right hand side of this first expression, the uh, Fourier DTFT, that would give you 1 by 1 over n, k varying from minus, okay, I'm, I'm tempted to write the final one, but let me just do it systematically. 0 to n minus 1 x tilde of k and here I have 2 pi times multiplied by 2 pi into the impulse function of 2 pi by n times k right uh, yeah so that means let me bring that 2 pi out and write that expression x tilde of e power j omega is equal to 2 pi by n k varying from 0 to n minus 1 x tilde of k into delta of omega minus 2 pi by n into k. That's the expression. See here, it has only these uh, x tilde of k would tell you like here the frequencies which are there right this is enforcing where to keep those they, they come at um, 2 pi by capital n for varying values of k that's where they appear in the frequency spectrum now the 
the axis has changed compared to DFS here, right? So that's why they are getting placed there. And uh, you could see here, suppose uh, you already know that the signal is periodic, okay? Uh, with a periodicity of 2 pi. So what would happen after this? See here, the maximum value you get here is 2 pi by n into n minus 1. And after that, of course, this being periodic, the whole things would repeat. Again, this is also periodic here. If you notice, after n minus 1, n would be same as this. So this is periodic. The, the current expression is absolutely fine. But instead of that, I could also write uh, if I want to express it over the entire omega value, I could equally write my k value to be varying from minus infinity to plus infinity x tilde of k into delta of omega minus 2 pi by capital N times K. Okay, that's the expression for the DTFT of a discrete time periodic signals. Don't get confused with the DTFT we did in the earlier classes. What we did in the earlier classes was DTFT for one period of a periodic signal. On the other hand, what we are doing right now is DTFT for the entire periodic sequence. That's the difference. Okay. Um, so that's all uh, here. Uh, let me give you uh, some example to work out here. Our exercise I would directly. Very simple one. Just to make sure you understood things correctly. Um, Ruth, I am giving you the answer also so that you don't I don't have to explain it again or give you later prove that the DTFT of X tilde of N which is equal to R varying from minus infinity to plus infinity delta of N minus or n is x tilde of e power j omega equivalent to k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity 2 pi by n into delta of omega minus 2 pi by n into Okay, that's the exercise for you. Uh, well, uh, there is uh, this is almost like a uh, question that you could answer orally itself. This is not, nothing new here. This is an impulse train. Hope you still remember for an impulse train with a periodicity of capital N. X tilde of K is equal to 1. So simply substitute there and you are ending up here. But still gave you as uh, an exercise for you. Please work it out. So that's all for uh, this class and uh, in the next video lecture we will try to uh, we will try to uh, relate the, all the stuff that we have discussed so far in this video and in the uh, previous videos for example the DTFT of your one period of your periodic sequence, DTFT of your entire signal and the DFS of the periodic signal. So somehow as you see as we move on, we would be making use of all these results there. Okay. Um, with that, I stop here and see you in the next video lecture. If you have any questions, post them in the uh, comment section or get them clarified in the Zoom session. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye. Take care.